I was on TikTok a couple of days ago and I came across a video of a Christian and an atheist debating and the atheist said, why would I worship someone who forces me to do so, who threatens me to worship him? As if like somebody was putting a gun up to his head and forcing him to worship. And I want to say to that, and not just to this person, but just anybody in general who would think that same way or have some type of thought like that, I just want to offer a little hope in this situation. So I'm going to pop it off just by saying off top, God doesn't force our worship. I'm going to say that again. God does not force our worship. And the reason he doesn't force our worship is simply because he does not need our worship. When a person forces a thing, it's because they need or want for something. And if God needed for anything, that would not make him God. We have to think real quick. God, by definition, is self-sufficient. If he's not self-sufficient, this does not make him God. Self-sufficient meaning in him and of him, all things all needs are met. He needs no outside help. If God needed help from us or from anything, this would simply make him not God. God calls us to worship him because that's what we were created to do along with all of creation. But he doesn't gain anything, nor does he lose anything from our worship. And I want to say that again because that's so important. He does not gain anything or does he lose anything. He doesn't gain anything or benefit from our worship. And nor does he lose anything and nor does he lose sleep over it. Simply because he is God and he is God alone. He doesn't need help being God nor does he need us. If he needed us then this would give us a reason to boast. But we can't do that before a holy God. And what I mean by boast is to say that you have some good to offer, not before a holy God. It states in Romans chapter 3, verses 10 through, 10 through 12, There is none righteous. No, not one. There is none who understands. There is none who seeks after God. They have all turned aside. They have together become unprofitable. There is none who does good. No, not one. And Isaiah 64 verse 6 goes on to say that our righteousness is nothing but filthy rags before a holy God. So we have nothing good to offer to God. It clearly says here. We have become unprofitable, meaning of no good use and no purpose. Basically, trash. You heard it? That's just how it is. Basically, trash. It's kind of like a newborn baby and their mom. There's literally nothing that that baby can do in and of itself at all. Its performance is what I like to say, trash. There's nothing that it can do in and of itself. Like We literally have to feed them, clothe them wash them, pick them up, put them down, put them to sleep. Their performance is straight trash. <laughs> In my bubble dub voice, straight, straight trash. So check this out. God is totally, and this is, this is another important point. God is totally independent. So he depends on nothing at all. He's God and he's God alone. Everything generates from him. All source of life generates from him. He is the source of life. But we are totally dependent upon him. I remember one time when I was at work and was talking to this guy and he said, he said, but you got up yourself and you came to work. You made that, you made that decision. And I was like, yeah, but who gave me the ability? Who gave me the ability to be able to, to be able to get up? And get out of bed. Who gave me the mind to be able to think and make a decision? We, we give ourselves too much credit. As if there was something apart from God that we done. No. He deserves all the glory. He deserves all the credit. Because there is nothing that has been created. 
that was not created by him. So God is totally independent, but we are totally dependent upon him. And that's what, and that's what anything you can say, well, I built this or I created this on my own. Who gave you, who, who gave you the resources to do such? Check this out. He wants us to worship him because it's solely for our betterment and our benefit alone. Everything about him is good. Everything about him is light. Everything about him is life. It's not like if we worship him, he becomes bigger and bigger and stronger. No. He's this infinite, all-powerful, all-seeing, all-knowing being who does not need for a thing. Understand his power. Understand his glory. And this is just a small snippet. He is the definition of good and what it means to be. For the simple fact, as I just said before, it's solely for our betterment. And our and, and and our benefit alone. If he had any ulterior motive, that within itself would not make him God. But no, he does this for the simple fact that he's just good. If if God wanted, check this out, if God wanted anything, it was for us to know him and his eternal goodness. God was just like, you know what? I'm so good. I need to share this. I want people to experience it. If that's not the purest motive within itself, I don't know what it is. And then to actually look to actually look at how he goes about it. He gives us all that we need. Looking at the Garden of Eden, he gave them everything they need. They didn't want for nothing, man. They were literally walking around naked. You talking about not needing a thing. The first thing we put on is clothes. This is how sufficient God is. When we're in his presence, when we're, when we're before him, nothing else matters. We need of nothing because we literally have the holy God of the universe. If he wanted anything, it's for us to know him in his eternal goodness. John 17 verse 3 says, Now this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Again, no ulterior motives. God gains nothing, nor loses, nor loses a thing. He is not him trying to get over. He's not trying to get an upper hand. No advancements. He's already over us. Talks about in the book of Isaiah how he says, My ways are higher than your ways. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. This is nothing but pure love, which is given without expecting a thing God said I'm giving it I'm giving it just to be given it I don't need your praise I don't need your worship I say do this because this is for your betterment so as I said so it was no try no trying to get over or get an upper hand nothing but pure love which is giving without expecting a thing question asks how do how do you give someone something? That's created everything for you. Like, for real. You can't. Again, he's God and he's God alone. So there was nothing outside of God that we had to go and seek or look for or find. Everything that we needed was in God. So, again, how do you give someone something that's created everything for, and giving you everything that you need? And when the truth is, when we deserve Nothing but an eternal punishment because of our sin. Remember, we were of no profit to him. Again, we could have been thrown away. And he would, ha would have had every right to do so. Pose that question again. How do you give someone something that's created everything for you? But out of his love... It's getting me excited right here, man. Out of his mercy and out of his grace, it wasn't nothing that we done. Let me let me let me go back up and read the scripture for you real quick. Romans chapter 3, verses 10 through 12. The scripture says right here, there is none righteous. No, not one. There is none who understands. There is none who seeks after God. They have all turned aside. They have together become unprofitable there is none who does good no not one 
The moment we try, we we try to say that we're good, that gives us a reason to boast before a holy God. But we're all sinners. We all broke His law. But what does He do? He sends His Son, who, by the way, is willing to become a human like us. That means put Himself through what we go through. He willingly chose to put Himself what we go through as humans. Philippians chapter 2 verse 6 through 8 says Jesus who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God but made himself of no reputation taking the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of men and being found in appearance as a man he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death even the death of the cross. I want to go back up to that for real quick. He said, he said, who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal, to be equal with God. We're talking about Jesus. He didn't consider it wrong. He didn't consider it wrong to be equal with God. But yet he made himself of no reputation. Taking the form of a bond server. That means he came here to serve. He didn't come here to be served. He didn't come here to say, look at me. Look at how good I am. No, I'm going to re-ask the question again. How do you give someone something who's already created and giving you everything, life and all? We do what Jesus did, who gave himself. So not only does God already give us everything, but he also gives us his son who would lead by example and to, to show us what true worship looks like. And again, Jesus wasn't forced. He willingly done it. So what does true worship look like? What is this? It's, it's, it, this is a life fully committed and sacrificed to God, dying to ourselves, dying to our flesh, the same way that Jesus, the same way that Jesus was became obedient even to the point of death. That means that he died to himself. He died to himself and he fought and he followed the father's will, not my will, but your will be done. Father, when the rich young ruler came up to Jesus and called him good teacher, what did Jesus say? Why? Jesus asked him, why do you call me good? He said, for there is only one good and that is God alone. So what does a true form of worship look like? Romans chapter 12 verses one through two says, I beg you now, brothers, in view of God's mercy, that you present yourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good pleasing and perfect will and this is what God wants for you God calls us to worship him because we were created to worship him and this is for our benefit and our benefit alone he gains nothing nor does he lose a thing he could have done away with the earth and he still will be God and he still will be satisfied in himself he didn't need to create a thing and say, I need this for me. He's love within himself. He's life within himself. He's the source of it in everything. All of that flows from him. He doesn't need us. We need him. And I'm happy because of that. Because where, where I'm weak at, I know that that's where God is strong. And I'm weak in all them places. Even on our best day, it's still folly to God. God's folly is stronger than human strength. That means God's foolishness is still better than human strength. But God got so much for your life, more than what we can think or imagine. But we must be willing to die to ourselves and realize that there is nothing good in and of ourselves. God is good. God is God, and he is good alone. And it's infinite. It's everlasting. That's why he's created us to worship him, simply because he loves us. And it's not out of no ulterior motives. Again, he's God and he's God alone. So I hope I said something to really get you thinking. Man, if this 
helped you in any way, please like, share, subscribe. Um, more will be coming, so stay tuned. This is the Fresh Perspective. It's brought to you by Live Victorious. Man, I hope you all have a blessed day. We love you all, and we're out. Peace.